Welcome to the Muskegon Channel. It's Andy O'Reilly, downtown Muskegon today with Ethan Lohman. He is the manager of the Downtown Community Choice Credit Union. He put him downtown because that's where all the young, cool people are like him, right? Something like that, yeah, somewhere <laughs> around there. <laughs> they sent me down here today to get what I have I should have gotten in probably the eighth grade, which is an education on, um, well, interest rates and all that kind of stuff. First, Ethan, thanks for a few minutes today. I know you got a busy day going on on a Monday. You got some hunting going on. You got the whole November thing. Yeah, yeah, you can I definitely... like the motif in here. You got yeah. a John Deere tractor on the wall. I just bought one this weekend. Did you really? Yes, we got a bigger John Deere for the house. So hey, I'm excited about that. John Deere green's a special kind of green. You got Absolutely. that right. So I'm gonna start right off and I think I'm gonna take the, the, take the role of a lot of our audience here. I don't know the first thing about interest rates. Here's and I'm, I'm just going to be flat out honest with you. If I look at an interest rate and I see it's a low number, I go, okay, good. And that's, that's what I know. So there's different types of interest rates. Talk, let's start talking about the different impacts of types of interest rates, especially when it comes to cars and homes and all that. Start with a home loan. Absolutely. So when, it, when we're talking about a home loan, an interest rate, just to break it down to the most simple uh, simple amount possible is for every dollar that you borrow, okay. there is a small percentage of that that we are lending to you that you're going to pay back to us for letting you borrow that amount. I get that. I get that much. Yeah. Fair enough. So that's Business. that's the, the bare breakdown of what an interest rate is. But moving forward past that, um, you talk about young. Um, we are seeing the, the fastest rising interest rates that my generation has ever seen. Right. Um, I, uh, a as a 1990s baby, as a millennial, um, we've gotten really used to seeing 2.99, 1.99, 3.0, 3.5, all of these really low interest rates, which you know from prior to 2008, that's not the way it always was. Right. Um, we've been really lucky for the last 14 years to be in what I would say a buyer's market is. Okay. Your dollar went a lot further the past 14 years than it does say today. And so as the economy starts to uh, speed up or slow down, the Federal Reserve uh, likes to adjust interest rates to keep the economy kind of flatlined in a certain area. No. If the economy grows too fast, inflation. If it goes too slow, you know, we have the opposite effect of that where interest rates drop. And so that's kind of where we're at today. We, we've been hearing these words inflation, inflation, inflation all over the news. And the follow-up to that is the, the federal government is trying to make your dollar more valuable. Okay. Uh, when inflation goes up, your dollar doesn't go as far. And I think everyone knows that. If you've been to the supermarket yeah. or the gas station or anywhere as of late, everyone's kind of aware of what the inflation prices have done. They tried to get me, and I kid you not, for fourteen fifty for six chicken tenders at a drive-thru not long ago. Oh my. Well, I went to... I mean, dude. Yeah. Right? I went to one with my kids, and I, I won't name it, but it was a, a burger place here in town, and it was like $18. For and you got little burger. ones. I have two little ones. Yeah, yeah little and, ones. Wow. And an 11 and a 9-year-old who eat like two grown adults. Right. So uh, that was that was a shock, to say the least. So it's everywhere. It is everywhere, right. and, and we're seeing it everywhere. Speaking of the mortgage rates specifically, um, mortgage rates generally since the 1970s have been around... Uh, I'd say 8% on okay. average. Um, I brought this nifty little chart from Freddie Mac that kind of goes over that. It talks about where the interest rates started at the decade and where they ended. And in the 1970s, we started at 7.31%. It ended at 7.48. So not a lot of jump in that first decade. Where we start to see the jumps is moving into the 80s, the 90s, and then when we get to the 2000s, we have some real big number changes. So in the 80s, it started at that 7.48. It jumped to 9.78 by the end of the 80s. And in the beginning of the 90s, we were at 10.13% wow. annual percentage rate. By the end of the 90s, it was 8.06. And then in the beginning of the 2000s, that 8.06 ended at 5.14. So you see it up, and then you see it come back down. And so... After the 5.14, the 2010s, we had some really known low numbers. Right. That's where we saw the, the numbers that we're talking about today. And that 5.14 is where it started, but it ended at 3.72, which is a very, very low number when it comes to a mortgage. Today, we are at uh, best rate scenario, 
224 on a 30 year mortgage. And the Fed sets this rate. That's correct. So okay. uh, banks and credit unions, we work off of the Fed's suggestion. Okay. So the Fed has a baseline, which is zero. We've been at zero for a long time now. Uh, every time the Fed hikes an interest rate, you'll see ours follow. Uh, and in turn, the higher the interest rate, the more money you pay on a month to month basis. At a home loan, you want to lock it in at the beginning. Correct. Say, so, and that's is that common that it gets locked in at the beginning, or are they variable, or does it depend on your you, credit? You can have different types of home loans. Okay. There are people who uh, who would prefer variable because they believe that down the road the, in the future it's going to go down. Okay. Um, but the majority of loans that we get, whether it's FHA or a traditional loan. Um, it's going to be a locked rate as soon as you step in the door. And that's why uh, for the past 10 years, you've been seeing all the commercials from these uh, institutions that just do loans. Right. And you hear the word refinance all the time. Right. That's the reason why you're hearing that. Because what they locked it in at, if somebody got a home loan, let's say 1992 at 11%, well, in 2010, it was 5.14. Yeah, you're saving some big money. Big, big money. Yeah, right? Uh, right. Your monthly payment can be almost cut in half at that point. Let's shift gears a little bit. Let's start talking about debt consolidation loans and these interest rates and things like that. Smart? Uh, it can be, absolutely. Yeah. So if you find yourself stuck in a scenario where, where you're really feeling like you're treading water. Um, Been there. And, and you're struggling. I have too. Dude. Absolutely. And I think it's, a, it's kind of a learning point all of our lives as we, as we grow. I don't think that, unfortunately, uh, the schoolings nowadays do enough to educate us on, uh, on the well, that's why we're here. and the impacts and things like that. <laughs> exactly. To get that out there. <laughs> right. And, uh, and so uh, I think we all have struggled. And when you're at that point, uh, and let's say you have a lot of credit card debt. Well, yeah. a credit card loan is a variable rate. Right. Every time you get a credit card loan, every time you get that credit card, it can start off by saying, oh, we've got an 8.74% uh, and a percentage rate. Yeah. Well, today, rates have gone up so much, that could be a 13 or 14% rate today. You where carry a balance. Absolutely. Dude, so let's talk about people who m make minimum payments, right? Yep. We're coming up on Christmas time. Uh, a lot of people like to spend uh, with their credit cards on Christmas time for a variable, uh, variable reasons. You know, it can be... Uh, they like the rewards that they're getting, or they just, you know, sometimes they overspend a little bit on Christmas. Sure. And they put it on their cards, and then they pay it off the next year. Well, let's say last year, before rates went up, you had uh, that 9% interest rate on your credit card. Let's say you had a really good rate, and you did $1,000 on that card. This year, that $1,000 at a 14% interest rate could be an entirely different monthly payment. It could be $100 more. Yeah, you brought this up with the house. I did. Talk yep. about this with the house. Yep, so I went ahead and I brought today for us, I know that you can't see it on the camera, but I brought this just for a demonstration. On a home loan, uh, last year on today's date, November 7th, 2021, if you had a $200,000 mortgage and you put 5% down, so $10,000 down on that home, your interest rate was 3.3% annual percentage rate. Yep. And your payment, this is just PMI, not taxes, not insurance, not any of that, this, uh, or this is just P and I, I'm sorry, this is uh, P and I, not PMI. I gotta make that very clear. Those are two different numbers. Know your uh, numbers, know your words. <laughs> That's why you come principal here. Principal and interest right. is what we're talking about. <laughs> $832. That's a good house payment. That is a good house payment. Now let's talk about today. Today. One year later, 365 days, the interest rate is 7.224%, okay? That same exact scenario, 200,000, 10% down, only principal and interest, P&I, not talking about taxes or insurance or PMI, $1,293. Wow. $400. Bucks. $461 more today to get the exact same home that you got a year ago. That's incredible. And that's what we're talking about with the credit cards. It's the exact same thing. As rates go up on the lending side, things start to stretch a little bit more. And that's what slows the economy down and slows inflation down, or at least that's what the government thinks uh, it's going to happen out of it, and that's why they do it. Refinance, refinance now. Is it too late? Um, if you have a, a high, the way I look at this is if you were to come and sit down with me, and let's say you had a, a 10% uh, a ten percent loan on your house, yeah. and 7.224 is the rate we're at now. Absolutely. It's still I will a good tell time. You all day to, 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 uh, to refinance. Yeah. Um, and we don't see the rates going down anytime soon. Um, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not a, a an economic forecast Nobody guru, is, right? Um, but uh, we haven't seen a downtick in a lot of the different things that we're looking at, inflation, um, and uh, and the economy in general. 
Uh, and so uh, I don't see rates going down. So if you are looking for a house, uh, now is the best time. But there are benefits to this as well. I, I know that it sounds really negative to talk about the interest rates going up, but there are benefits on the other side, and it really depends on where you're at in life, who really uh, takes on those benefits. Talk about them. Absolutely. So anytime interest rates go up on the lending side, soon to follow is the saving side. CD rates, uh, investments, and things like that, they tend to go up. For example, right now, we're running a 13-month special on a 2.5% uh, annual percentage yield CD. It's a 13 month uh, special at 2.5. For example, our one year before we were running this special was a 0.25% wow. APR. So that is 10 times the difference in that. And that's because on the other side, the rates are going up. So as you pay more for a home, yep. when your savings, we're going to pay you more for your certificate of deposit. Now's a good time to start a savings account. It is. And the way I like to look at this is, you've heard the terms a buyer and a seller's market. Yep. Well, we have a spender and a saver's market, right? A saver's market is when your interest rates are going up, you have the money ready to go, you've paid off your home. A lot of those people in their, you know, the 40 to 60 range, not ready to retire yet, but they're wanting to get the most out of the money that they have saved. This is the time for them to start getting on some of those CD specials and to start saving and making more money on their money. Um, on the other hand, if you're the spender, it's time to start learning out how to budget and how to save. Important. Very important. A lot of my mistakes when I was young. Yeah. We, really was. Today's society, we all have these cards, right? Yeah. Um, back in the day, uh, we had checkbooks and cash. Uh, and when your wallet was empty, you were out of cash. You were out of money. And you knew it. Well, today, it's not that simple right? anymore. We now have these other options out there for people to use. And this type of a market really gives us the opportunity to sit down with our members and to figure out a budgeting plan and how to make the most out of your money. How do we stretch your money? When the government and in, uh, interest rates and inflation is trying to crunch your money, how can we best suit you to kind of stretch that and make your dollar go further, at least from our standpoint? How do we help you fit, find those niches and, and kind of tighten things up? And I love it. And that's why we're in every one of these little, every one of these little corners in the county talking about this stuff with community choice. I Absolutely. Dude, yeah. you guys, final, let's say you walk into the ninth grade tomorrow. Yep. And you're going to open up with something, interest advice for ninth graders, your opening statement. Perfect. First, I know I'm going to put you on the I spot. I feel like the ninth graders might be smarter than me. But, well, uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, but uh, my, my opening statement would be uh, finances are not simple. No and they never have been. We have been taught by commercials and uh, people who want to sell you stuff that they are simple. You want a boat? Go get your boat. You want a house? You go get your house. And there's no talk about the back end. Uh, my opening statement would be to them is to sit down with someone who understands the financial world yeah. and get a grasp on where you want to be in five to 10 years. As a ninth grader, you're going to want to go to college, but how do you pay for college? Right. You're going to want a car. How do you pay for a car? I remember me at nine, at nine, in ninth grade, you can see the cars up there. I'm a, I know, I'm right? a car guy. Uh, <laughs> I wanted a car. And when I got in the military, when I was in the Air Force, you know, I had all of these people around the bases going, hey, come get a car. Yeah. Well, no one talked to me about how much of that payment was towards the car and how much of it was towards interest. You know, that $461 jump we just talked about in a mortgage, that's all an interest payment. Yeah. That's not going towards your house. That's not making your house pay off faster. That's simply paying the bank more. Yeah. And that's where it's really important to do your research. It's really important to look around and figure out what works best for you. And on top of that, you really need to sit down and budget. Budget budget, budget. Anyone that comes in my office that's talking about interest rates, that's talking about saving, it doesn't matter what cycle you are, whether you're in the spend, whether you're in the save, whether you're in the borrow, whatever cycle you are in life, a budget is going to be key to make sure that you can accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish despite the rising interest rates, despite inflation, and despite all of those things, if you can budget and budget well, you will be successful financially in life. That's not me. That's not your parents. That's the, that's Ethan Loman right there giving you great sounded financial advice right here from Community Choice Credit. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it.